Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench and this week we're gonna take a look at doing a logo reveal with Fields. So a few weeks back, I was creating a logo animation for a client and I was trying to animate the logo turning from one side to the other and dissolving up. But I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I could take fields and make that dissolve up, not straight uh, dissolve up, but maybe I could cut that mat a little bit so that it would have some interesting noise breakup. I thought on it a little bit and I came up with this solution. So check it out. It's pretty cool. So I started out by creating the logo I just did that in Motex. And then, so in my Motex object, under caps. I left it caps on both. And then I went and I said, create single object. And then under type, I set it to quadrangles. For this effect to work, I need a lot of geo here. And then I set this width to two. And then under object, I went down here under intermediate points and I set that to 20. And I also set my subdivision here to 10 so that it has some subdivisions down the side as well. And I hit make editable, which gave me this to essentially each and every letter of the workbench logo. So then I took that and I put that in a fracture object so that I could control the turning of the objects as well as I could individually adjust the maps. So next what I did was I went to the object, I went into polygon mode, and then I went into select, and then I set vertex weight, and I set that to zero. And that essentially gives you this. And then I turn on fields, and then I did two things here. I created two fields, I created a linear field, and a random field. This is my random field, and as you can see, it's just like a noisy map. And then I crushed it a little bit so that we would have really nice bright peaks. And then I made a linear field. And this linear field, I'm gonna reuse it to do the turn of the object, as well as the reveal of the text. So I put the linear field in here, and I set my random field to overlay. So now if I move my linear field, you can see what happens here. You can see here it's breaking up from completely invisible to full solid object. Or well, it will be once we do the texture maps. All right, that's part one of our setup. So the second part of this is I'm gonna use the field I made already to control a rotation on each of these letters. So I'm gonna grab my fracture object here and I'm gonna go into effectors and I'm gonna grab a plane effector. And then I'm just gonna use a turn I have to turn this back on, and I'm gonna make this negative 90. And then I'm gonna control this with the linear field I've already done. So I'm gonna go into my fall off here, and I'm just gonna drag this linear field in here. Cool thing about this is my linear field's already set up, so now here's my animation already. Now this technique doesn't use the setup in here where you can just make this an alpha. It'll dissolve between invisible and solid object. We actually need a texture map now to use our vertex weight. So we're gonna go in here, and I'm going to create, um, in my case, I used Redshift. I'm going to do a standard one, and then I'll show you the Redshift setup. It's actually pretty similar. I'm going to create a new material, and then under Alpha here, you just basically go under Effects and Vertex Map. So now my transparency is being controlled by my Vertex Map that I created. It's being controlled by this linear field. Also, you need to grab this Vertex Weight that I created, and drag it to all of the other ones. Because the way that it's set up, it will automatically just apply a vertex weight of zero to everything, and that'll be your starting point. So one thing to note is that you have to invert your vertex map because otherwise it will do it backwards and it'll dissolve it away, you can see. So you have to click invert for it to go the proper direction. Let me show you the setup for Redshift. So I'm going to create a new material, and then I'm going to apply my Redshift material to the main thing, and then I'm just going to have it copy to children because I'm lazy, and that's faster. All right, so inside Redshift, there is a couple things we're going to do. Start with, I need a vertex map. So we're going to grab a vertex attribute, and then I'm also going to need a ramp. So our vertex map here, we know that all of these share the same name because I copy pasted them. So I'm just gonna drag it in here under name. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pump it into my ramp. And again, like I did the other one, I'm gonna have to invert this 
And then I'm going to pump this into overall opacity. Preferably into here. Overall opacity. So now, if I turn on my Redshift IPR, a couple of things to note inside Redshift. Your ramp here needs to be set to Alt. And there we go. So let me scrub through it so you can see. There you go. This week was a quick one, but it's a useful one. All right, well, that's it for this week. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev, and we will see you next week. Thank you.